In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, and I really strongly suspect that we are going to be having a major severe weather outbreak here coming up very soon as we approach this upcoming weekend, and even a little bit into it as well, thinking mostly uh, Friday, Saturday time frame, also Thursday, we might have a bit of a threat as well. This is going to be a pretty big window to watch for as we have a nearly historic low pressure system moving in from the Rockies, really the West Coast, through the Rockies, into the Plains. This is going to be impacting everybody from coast to coast, so a really intense system. And we have other low pressure systems to track. We are going to be in an overwhelmingly warm pattern moving forward when we look at it overall, but there will be colder windows in there as well. So we're going to kind of take a deeper dive into it, kind of break down the more specific things that you can't tell from looking at these, you know, six to 10 day temperature outlooks and eight to 14. It's going to be a fun one. So let's go ahead and just get into it. We're looking at the six to 10 day temperature outlook here from the Climate Prediction Center and the National Weather Service. This will run from March 15th through 19th, and we can see a negative PNA setting up. All that means is cold out west here, and this forces all of the warm that would be in this area up into the central states, as we can see, but especially the eastern states here, where we see highly above normal temperatures expected for this corridor here. As we take a look at the precipitation, it's going to be very high for most areas of the nation, especially the west here. And then a lot of the east, where the driest area is going to be the south central region, mostly Texas and Oklahoma. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, this will be from March 17th through 23rd. We could see that negative PNA still in effect. And again, just like the first time, it is forcing warm air into the central and especially the eastern United States here. So basically, from this point onward, all the way until the 23rd, we expect a mostly warm pattern which is just crazy looking at the precipitation it's also above average in the west above average in the east here with a little bit of below average across the south central states looking at the three to four week temperature outlook here this is for the 22nd through the 4th of, of april we do actually expect a neutral temperature pattern out west i suspect it'll lean cold especially if this is the end result in the east which is warm in the central and then warm in the eastern states here, just like we're seeing for the kind of early, mid, and even late portions of March. This is just kind of predicting that to just continue on straight through the end of March and into early April. So really warm start to the early springtime. And as we move through April, we're going to be limiting our cold chances. Cold days in late April and May are going to be much more in the lower 60s. So not even really cold. Uh, so we're kind of gliding through this time frame that could be up and down in a much more up pattern as opposed to down. And yeah, looking like an early start to a warm fall time. Looking at the past 10 days of temperatures, this will be your full meteorological spring so far and your full month of March so far. What we see is the coldest area has been along this kind of southwest area here even extending down into Mexico and this is acting as a negative PNA but a very west based one so we've seen most of the warm temperatures rush into this area like the Rockies and northern plains southern plains as well and even up into the midwest and great lakes what's interesting is this area was the coldest area in February so we are seeing a huge 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 turnaround in the overall temperatures here absolutely wild stuff very neutral here in the east so we're seeing very close to normal a little bit above or below in some areas, but really just within a degree or two of normal. That is going to warm up in a big way here coming up. Let's take a look at the European model first off. And throughout the day today, we do have thunderstorms and showers present in the southeast uh, area for Monday the 10th today. We do also see some showery activity in the northwest where we're seeing some snow and rain showers depending on your elevation. So there is some precipitation up there, but a relatively quiet day today as we move towards Tuesday. We'll find out that things can get even quieter because really we have nothing going on unless we're discussing a few showers up there in the northwest or a minor low pressure system moving on shore to the southwest. Uh, there's not really too much else to discuss uh, anywhere else. As we take a look at Wednesday, though, that storminess in the west starts to really, really take off. We're seeing heavier rainfall for the coastal areas, also overall for the lower elevation areas. And then as we look towards the Cascades, 
Sierra Nevada mountains, Northern Rockies, we are seeing some heavier snowfall for those mountain ranges, which, you know, for this time of year shouldn't come as a massive surprise whatsoever. As we just keep on going towards Thursday, we see this low forming. This is our really, really intense low pressure system over Colorado. We're going to see some overnight thunderstorms from this one in a moment, but really the activity at this point by the afternoon hours of Thursday are, uh, we see heavy snowfall out west. We see rainfall for the lower and coastal areas. Just a really intense look out west. There is also some isolated and scattered about thunderstorms taking off for the deep south here into some of like the Tennessee Valley. So we are seeing continued activity out there. I want to take us just a couple of hours forward because we do see this low start to want to get going, especially as we move overnight, 985 over eastern Colorado. Uh, and as we're moving towards 2 p.m., it's really starting to take off. So I guess I misspoke in the beginning of the video when I said Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mostly going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday here. Uh, we're really seeing a heavy snowfall nearby this low here for some of the central and southern Rockies like Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico. And this could come in the form of blizzard conditions. We have this 979 millibar low pressure center. And this is almost definitely bringing intense winds to this area. Wind. Very intense wind plus very heavy snowfall equals blizzard conditions. So we are seeing the ingredients there for Friday afternoon. We do see that the West Coast is also getting another low pressure system, bringing equally heavy snowfall to some parts. So another hefty system for the West. And as we move towards Friday evening, this is when things start to really, really get going. This is 8 p.m. Eastern time. We have a 978 here over Kansas. And we are seeing... Heavy thunderstorms starting to pop out for the Midwest, some of the plains, and down through the deeper south in here. It's really, really just taking off. Snowfall continues for the west as well with heavier precipitation in the coastal regions. As we reach towards Saturday afternoon, what we see is a couple of interesting things. This 978 is now over Wisconsin. Heavy wintry precipitation nearby Minnesota and states surrounding, as well as for parts of Canada. This is also going to bring the risk of blizzard conditions for those areas seeing heavy snowfall in there. We have their primary low here, and then we have a couple of secondary lows. Uh, they're just kind of hanging around, and the models have trended in an interesting direction. Instead of our severe weather and, and cold front overall just kind of gliding through straight into the eastern states, what we see happen is a low forms along this cold front, and this one kind of takes over and heads northward. And then the severe weather takes place underneath it at a certain point. So let's watch this play out. Uh, as we reach towards Sunday afternoon, we see that secondary low take over. It moves almost into a similar spot as the original one, 994 here. Now this is your primary low with a cold front here. Uh, it's basically independent from this, this even stronger low here over the Hudson Bay. So this is now your acting low with the warm front and the cold front and all that. Uh, definitely some heavier thunderstorms in this area. We will look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks at the end of this video. They don't have it for Sunday yet, but I'm sure that there will be uh, some outlooks at some point for this one. Uh, probably not as intense as it'll be for the Plains and Deep South in the Southeast, but it could be another threat. So interesting to pay attention to. Really wintry looking out for the Northwest. I mean, heavy, heavy snowfall for these mountain ranges, rainfall in the lower elevation areas. Really going to be watching that. As we push towards Monday afternoon, we see this cold front is finally moving offshore. We probably have at least heavier showers for the eastern seaboard by this 2 p.m. on Monday the 17th. But if not, thunderstorms taking place. As we keep going past this, we get another low forming in a very similar spot. Kansas here between Kansas and Oklahoma, or Kansas and Colorado, better yet. Heavy snowfall for the Rockies and parts of the Plains. Probably not blizzard conditions just looking at this map, but obviously things could change. We have a very strong low once again, so you can't really rule out anything at this point. As we move towards Thursday afternoon, this is when this one really starts to get going. 991 over parts of Illinois. We can tell there's a dragging cold front here with a warm front out ahead of things. So we get the same classic setup. Your main area to watch would be in here, this heaviest precipitation underneath that low. Definitely going to be paying attention to that. And we do get another potential and more limited snow threat here for the Midwest and parts of the Great Lakes. Uh, these are relatively small snow systems that we're seeing on both of these storms, on this particular model at least, so it's going to be something to pay attention to. 
Obviously, this could become a little bit more expansive over time. There's plenty of time for things to change in that way, but for now, it seems pretty small and isolated as far as who sees snowfall. That one moves out, and then we get another one. This one's much weaker, but this one develops kind of over North Dakota, Canada-ish areas, a very weak low. This one's going to want to kind of just drop it and start to bring impacts. So we see Saturday the 22nd, Sunday the 23rd, some thunderstorms firing up underneath this one as well. Maybe not as major of a threat as the two others we looked at, but certainly going to bring some thunderstorm chance, if not severe weather. Uh, and then as we move towards Monday, that's still bringing impacts. So we're seeing this trend of, you know, stronger lows, maybe a couple of weaker ones in there, but consistent lows moving in. We get another strong one building in for Oklahoma here, mostly as a warm front feature, but the specifics don't matter too much at hours 360. So we'll have to see, but the trend is just continued activity in a very similar way for a pretty extended amount of time here. Looking at the GFS model, I'm gonna work our way through it. Here's that major low, and it's gonna act almost in the same exact way with the primary low moving up and then an independent secondary low kind of taking over at a certain point here around Sunday the 16th. Moves out a little quicker than the European model showed, but similar, similar impacts. Second low here, very similar as well, up Midwest and Great Lakes snowfall, severe weather underneath it. Moves into the southeast kind of, and we get a secondary low developed underneath this one as well that wants to move up in a similar way. So that would be interesting if we see back-to-back -back systems with that same kind of feature. And then instead of that weaker low coming from Canada, we just get another, a third major low kind of moving up in a similar path as the two before it around the 24th here of March. That brings obviously some pretty crazy severe weather to the plains, especially the southern plains into parts of the deep south and midwest. And eventually moving towards the east here, like on Wednesday, the 26th. Again, as we move past, you know, 10 days, you want to take it with a grain of salt. But the trend on both of these models is just really repetitive and consistent storms moving through over and over and over again. And that would obviously bring numerous impacts on numerous occasions. Total precipitation here. This is going to be uh, through the entire model run. And we see a lot for the west here as we've been seeing on the models and also uh, a pretty decent amount in the east. We have seen some increases, some decreases, but mostly just moving around with the areas uh, overall that are seeing the most. When we look at the anomalies, the west is almost fully above normal as far as precipitation is concerned. And so is the northern plains and upper midwest for that matter. Uh, it's once you move into this eastern area that things get a little bit confusing. We get drier pockets, wetter pockets, drier pockets, another wet pocket offshore here. So it's really hard to kind of break down where all of this is going to land because so many things can move around a bit that it's hard to break it down. Uh, really could swing either way in this area. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to the specifics really as to who sees the most and who sees the least which it's going to take time to figure out. The European model kind of goes along with my consensus of how I see the upcoming pattern, which is the West getting bombarded by snowfall, back-to-back -back snowfall threats for the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, and Great Lakes, but basically nothing underneath there or even for the Northeast for that matter. Really nothing happening. GFS model, going to agree a little bit. We do get these little pockets in here, like for New England and some for the Ohio Valley here, but... Outside of that, it's very similar to the European model. Looking at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks, here's the day one outlook. And we do have a general thunderstorm risk here from Georgia into South Carolina and even North Carolina. This is the area where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So heat every watch, warning, and advisory. This is again for today on March 10th through the morning of Tuesday the 11th. It'll go through about 6 or 8 a.m., depending on where you're at. Uh, we see that here in southern Florida, the southern half there, I would say, we have a level one marginal risk in the darker green there, where we do expect isolated severe weather to be possible. So you're going to want to be on the lookout for that. The day two outlook, which will be for tomorrow on Tuesday, March 11th through the morning of the 12th, we see a little bit of southwest thunderstorm activity, perhaps southern California into southern Arizona, seeing some general thunderstorm chances. Again, severe weather is always possible, but... It's not really expected with this, but you're going to want to still pay attention. And then for day three, we do kind of upgrade things with another uh, marginal risk here for areas of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Just a concerning area. You know, all the thunderstorms that pop, pop up here, I feel like, have a tendency to be a little bit more unpredictable, a little bit worse oftentimes than other areas. So it's just going to be something to pay attention to. 
And now we're going to go ahead and move into the extended range where for the day five outlook, this will be for Friday the 14th into the morning of Saturday the 15th. So a lot of this happening overnight. The yellow area is your 15% chance of severe weather area. That is where we expect at least a slight risk. And then the orange area here for parts of Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, as well as Missouri there, that's at least an enhanced risk that we're expecting to see in there. So we've seen an upgrade already. It's at day five still. This one got issued, I think, at day six or seven. I think it was six. So they got issued yesterday or the day before. I can't really remember. But this has been issued for a long time. And anytime you see them show up with the orange in the long range here, that means they expect a considerable severe weather threat. Oftentimes they wait till it's within the three three day range of the categorical outlooks like we just looked at. So anytime they issue something beyond that, you know, it's something to pay attention to. But the orange in particular, really, really concerning. We also have it for day six on the 15th into the morning of the 16th. This will be Saturday where we have at least a slight risk expected for areas of the deep south up into some of Tennessee and Kentucky as well. And then between Mississippi and Alabama, another concerning area for thunderstorms and severe weather. We have that same 30% area in the orange where, again, roughly translates to an enhanced risk. Like I mentioned, we don't have anything. I mentioned this yesterday, at least. We don't have anything for Sunday the 16th. But I would suspect that it's going to be a bit of a threat for these areas in the southeast corridor. So we'll be watching that very, very closely. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.